Today's video will explain the parts of a UML component diagram. Hello, I'm James Helfrich. Many design tools such as a flowchart or a data flow diagram have rather complex components, but a UML component diagram does not. There's only a few parts. This video will explain those parts and show how to use them. The UML component diagram consists of components, required interfaces, provided interfaces, assembly connections, and ports. Let's look at each of these in turn. Now, first of all, we have the components. The components are systems, subsystems, services, libraries, classes, or even functions, and they can be nested. So in this case, I have a view component, I have a model component, and I have a controller component. But within the view component, I also have an OpenGL subcomponent, a display subcomponent, a facade subcomponent, and a database subcomponent. Now, a required interface is something that is needed by a component for it to function. So in this case, the controller requires a view, the controller requires a model, and the facade requires a database, and the display requires an OpenGL. In most cases, we name the interface that we require. Now, the required is always an open half circle, which means I need something. This means the controller cannot function without the model, which means that the controller cannot function without the view. Now, a provided interface is a service offered to another component. So for an example, the database provides a SQL interface. Now notice the database functions just fine without the facade. So the database does not require the facade, um, but the database provides, provides functionality. Now notice that there could be a thousand different recipients of the database's SQL interface, um, or there could be none. Um, the database doesn't know or care, it just provides an interface. So in this example, GLU is a provided interface. The graphics is a provided interface. The model game is a provided interface and SQL is a provided interface. An assembly connector is when a required and a provided interface mate. So in this case, OpenGL and display mate through the GLU interface and the controller and the facade mate through the game interface. A port is an explicit and often formal interface through which all communication travels. So this begs the question, what's the difference between a normal interface and a port? And the answer is, well, it's kind of nebulous. A port tends to be more formal. A ten port tends to be documented. A port tends to be standardized. If there's an IEEE specification or if there's a written specification, it's probably good to call it a port. But by no means is there a formal distinction between a port interface and any other interface. You can learn more about the parts of a component diagram and the component diagram elements section of the component diagram chapter of the software design textbook.